And how many know that we serve a great God? He is great Jehovah. And we won't stop praising no matter what goes on in our life. We won't stop praising no matter what it looks like. And we won't stop praising, right? Because we serve a great and awesome God. Um, as we see um, our loved ones coming in on tonight, as we welcome you to our prayer, praise, and proclamation Christian ministries, Thursday night Bible study in this virtual se um, setting. I'm grateful to God for all the many blessings he has bestowed on us. Um, just seeing the names and faces of those who I know can say that he's great Jehovah and they won't stop praising. When I think about how Sister Maria, Evangelist Maria just shared a couple weeks ago and she was saying that it hasn't been all bad after losing her hearing, that, that's more than a mouthful. Cause I know for me, I can count like, oh Lord, Maybe I'm just a little more dramatic. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, I, I have to, sometimes you have to stop and realize that not only, you know, are there things that are worse and people that are worse off in other conditions, but if they can still see the fine side, the blessed side, the praising side, well, it, may, it, it makes you reconsider how you looking at your trials and tribulations. You know, you start to be like, well, you know what? Maybe I've been looking at this wrong. So, um, but as well as, you know, seeing how God has blessed um, Brother Sam Lee and how God um, answered that prayer for him and Jackie with that brand new kidney, um, blessing um, each and every one of us in so many ways. And every time I see Mother Sonia come in to the church house, no matter what um, um, her son, her beloved son has shared and, you know, she's not feeling too well. Mother Sonia comes in and she's smiling and hugging. She gonna give you a good old kiss. You know, she gonna let you know that she loves you, you know, and so that, that goes back to, we serve a great God and we won't stop praising. I mean, that's just a few things, you know, we've been praying for Evangelist Dolores' grandson and he's home and safe and sound. You know, again, there's so many reasons and I'm just naming off a few. I haven't even mentioned how the, the how the church went for the CUP last night, and that was all done and uh, with quick, fast, in a hurry, you know, and just been approved. And so again, great Jehovah, you're Amen. Good, and we won't stop praising because God, you have been good to us. The Scripture says, and we quote it often: "The for the Lord is good; His mercy is everlasting." and his truth endures throughout all generations. So um, our teacher is in on tonight. We are in for another barn burner, as my dad calls it. I believe all of these homegrown sessions, I'm very much a fan as a content creator, um, instructional designer myself. I always believe when you create or um, compile because God created everything, but when we um, compile information together and we, build a study if something happens when it's homegrown it's just like a home-cooked meal it's better than fast food even though fast food can be convenient you know but it's something about homemade that just hits different and so here we have some homemade lessons on tonight um, in the series that we're in and so we're just grateful to God and so I'm going to turn it over to our pastor on tonight uh, so he can bring greetings and then we'll be in the hands of his direction as it relates to prayer, scripture, and opening song. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, saints. Uh, three Ps. It's good to see everyone on tonight. God is good and he is greatly to be praised. You know, uh, you all didn't tell me that I had got old. <laughs> this has been a pretty busy week. Uh, the Lord blessed on uh, Tuesday morning. We drove up to Las Vegas and got situated and went to the service that night as we prepared for ministering in the juvenile facility on yesterday. And I uh, just got an email that uh, it was, let's see, read this to you real quick. Um, Praise the Lord that 75 young men and women started a new relationship with Jesus Christ on yesterday. That was three different facilities Amen. that we went to. And what a blessing that was. 
one young man, he was about 15 years old. I'll tell you this one part because I could go on all night. I had 10 young men after we did the program sitting around me and uh, trying to go through the track, but they had so many questions and they were in so many different places. But what really touched me, the one young man on my left, I asked the one question, if you were to die tonight, where would you spend eternity? And out of all 10 of them, he said, I would go to heaven. He said, because I've asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins. That <laughs> I was I was wiped out. You could have bought me for 10 cents at that point. I mean, you know, and the young and to see these kids incarcerated at 15 and 16 years old. But thank God that we were able to have a great program with them and, and to encourage their hearts. So we had to uh, pack up and hurry up and get out of Vegas because we had to be back to the church, I mean, to uh, City Hall in Norco for seven o'clock. So we got home, I guess it was about a little after five o'clock, just enough to freshen up and uh, uh, got back down there, sat in the city council meeting and brother Chuck and all the saints, uh, they, uh, when it's all said and done, long story short, they approved the conditional use permit. Hallelujah. With conditions and whatever those conditions are, we'll, we'll meet those. But, uh, and, and matter of fact, the two ladies of in planning went and thank God for Sister Dolores and Sister Carol, Carolina was there and Doug, the owner of the building and Pastor Turner from the other church on the other side. The ladies who work at, uh, at the city hall in planning, they start giving us the thumbs up <laughs> in the middle of the meeting. I say, look at God. So uh, we, we're on the right track, we're moving forward. Today, I had to be in San Diego at 1.30 to meet with the warden for the event coming up Saturday. So I just got back home about an hour ago. Like I say, y'all didn't tell me I got this old. So <laughs> brother pastor is tired, <laughs> tired tonight, but thank God we're looking forward to going out on the prison yard on Saturday uh, morning, uh, two programs morning and afternoon. And that'll be the culmination of, of this week that's been very uh, rewarding, but trying as well. So we just thank the Lord. So y'all please keep me in your prayers and uh, pray for us as we go down behind those prison walls to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. So why don't we get ready to get started in our, in our Bible study tonight, Brother Tyrone, Ms. Camilla, so Forsett will be sharing tonight, unified in Christ. Every time he mentioned that, he started jumping around. I don't know, he must be excited. <clears throat> so I'm gonna ask Brother Chuck if you would lead us in prayer. Uh, and then uh, uh, Sister Christy, uh, find a scripture for us. And uh, can you do that? Amen. And then we will get right into the lesson, give our Brother Tyrone ample time to share the word of God of tonight. Amen. God bless you all, love you. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge who you are. Lord, we praise you. Lord, um, we thank you for your holiness. Lord, your sovereignty, your love for us, your mercy, your kindness. Lord, thank you for being reconciled to you, being able to fellowship with you, Lord. Um, Lord, thank you for this evening where we can go into your word and uh, Lord, be reminded and challenged and encouraged. Lord, we thank you for Brother Tyrone as he's going to share tonight. Uh, Lord, you, you know his desire, his, his excitement for your word, his desire to share and to apply your word. Lord, we ask that you open our ears, Lord, to, to be not only hearers, but doers. And we thank you. And Lord, we praise you. We glorify you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. There we go. Um, Isaiah 61 3 and provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor.
Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you. Oops. This lady in Yoruba Valley will be in the hands of our, our brother uh, Bo Tyrone. I call him Bo Tyrone because when he's all decked out, he's got a bow tie on. All right. <laughs> well, praise God. We thank God for this opportunity. And we thank God for the pastor and all the body of Christ. Praise God. And as we move into our our study on tonight, fighting Christ. And that's a beautiful thing to recognize, amen. We have become one with God, one with Christ because of salvation, praise God. And I was just looking at the scripture, if you don't mind, we turn to uh, St. John, the 17th chapter, and we're going to read that, and then we're going to proceed on from there. Uh, St. John 17. I begin to read it if you uh, if you have it. Praise God. And we start at verse uh, nineteen, and, and the scripture speaking of it says, uh, verse nineteen says for Saint John, and I'm reading from the Amplified version. It says, for their sake I sanctify myself to you, your will, so that they also may be sanctified. And we know set apart, unified in Christ, set apart, dedicated, made holy in your truth. I do not pray for these alone. It is not for their sake only that I may make this request, but also for all of those who will ever believe. Oh God, whoever believe and trust in me through their message, that they all may be one, talking about oneness, just as you, Father, are, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one and again and in us, so that the world believe without any doubt that you sent me. I have given them the glory I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one, just as we are one. Verse 23, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected and completed into us, so that the world may know without a doubt that you sent me and that you have loved them just as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they, verse 24, I desire that they also whom you have given to me as your gift to me may be with me where I am so that they may see my glory which you have given me because you love me because the found, before the foundation of the world. Praise God, I'm gonna stop there. We know we see the we speak in there in the scriptures. So I, I just wanted to uh, open up with that. And we even got in our uh, script in our lesson we can look at uh, uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 13. And it, and it reads, reading from uh, our last Ephesians 13. Excuse me, I get it together here. Ephesians 4 and 13. This will continue until we all come to the unity unified in Christ, unity in our faith and knowledge of God, son, that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Praise God, praise God. And we know that was, that was a high standard, but praise God, God has given us the power and the authority to do that. Amen, be unified with him. I was looking at the, uh, Unity, praise God. And after that, I'll give you the background and then we'll go into the discussion starter. A condition of harmony. Praise God. And as I was looking at that and I was breaking it down. Praise our unity, the quality of state, as we just uh, quoted. But unity is the whole journey are linked. 
And this is a commandment of God. It is a law of the celestial kingdom as we live the gospel and love and serve others. We feel at one with our brothers and sisters and more in tune with the, the divine, praise God. And for as the background, uh, the background, as we look at me uh, from last week, we see the background, truly understand that the saving grace, as Paul explained in prior chapters, is a, a Christian's first motivation for living a godly life. Here Paul encourages believers to live in a way which honors, honors that gift. All saved Christians are part of a single unified family, part of the body of Christ. At the same time, different believers are given different talents or gifts. Some, some are called to position of leadership and authority. All Christians should turn away from the old self we were prior to being saved. Paul's explanation, explanation of the new life include some basic prep, practical steps, praise God. So as we look at uh, the, start, the start of question, and it says, how important would you say unity is within the body of Christ? Let's, let's, and then the second part of that, how can the concept of Christian unity help us in our secular relationship? And that's open up to the floor. Anyone that wanna to respond to it? I, I would say, um... Minister Tyrone, that unity, uh, unification is very important in the body of Christ. Um, when the world sees that the church or churches, denominations, or within a church has division, um, to me, it's like a black eye. You know, um, it's, it's important yes. for us to be unified, for us to be on the same page for us to even receive the blessings of God to be able to go out and do what he's called for us to do. So to me, unification is very important. And you asked about the second portion of the qu second question, how can the concepts of Christian, Christian unity help us in our secular relationships? Um, it's, it, it does help. It just, when we unify ourselves with Christ and with the body of Christ, it helps us on our jobs. It helps us um, in, in the marketplace. I mean, it, it, it presents, we present a much uh, better us when we are yes. unified with the body of Christ. I love that. That's beautiful, beautiful. Anyone else? Praise God. That's good stuff. Brother Tyrone, can you turn All right, yourself right? All right, let's do popcorns. Brother Tyrone, can you turn yourself straight up? You, you're sideways. Thank you. Elder Jones, are you, are you off of you, Jones? Yeah, you know, I, I kind of uh, uh, hook right on what Sister Sandy was saying. You know, uh, <clears throat> I think you mentioned it, Pastor, on Sunday. You know, when we are unified with the Lord, when our relationship with the Lord is a good relationship, all of our secular relationships become better. I'm yes. better with my wife and, you know, we're better in our, our, our marriages. We're better with our children. We're better on our jobs because we have a perspective that is supernatural. It's not natural. And so we see things, you know, the way God sees them when we're connected with God, you know, it's, it's an interesting thing that when you are uh, next to the Lord, when you're close to him, your vision gets more clear uh, and the other part of this that was the second part the first part of it what hit me was when it says how important would you say unity is within the body of christ i think about the human body as well you know if a part of your body isn't working well you know 
say for instance, you got a busted toe. You were, you were walking last night and then in, in the dark to the bathroom, you, you hit your big toe. You know, now swollen and you're trying to walk. Well, you can walk, but it hurts. You can't go as quickly. You're not as comfortable. You're not as functional as you would be if you weren't in pain. So anytime a part of us isn't functioning well, it affects the whole part of us. And the same thing applies to the body of Christ. When all of the body is not working together, it's not going to work as well. It will work, but not as well. We won't get as much done. We won't get it done as quickly. We won't get on to the next assignment until we get that problem fixed, until we find ourselves unified, that all, that all of the parts are there and all of the parts are doing their fair share and doing what they're called to do. Amen. It's God. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. That's right. You're talking about unified. That's that's walking together, oneness. That's what and that's what we should be striving for every day. And and this is what uh Paul was emphasizing at Ephesus that we have to grow up and, be, and become mature Christians and you know grow. And as we grow, then our mind becomes more centered on our, our selfish motives, so to speak. We have a single eye, you know. And we, as Paul said, no more I, but it's Christ that lives in us. And I love that. Anyway, anyone else want to uh, pop in there right quick? Uh, <laughs> but if not, go ahead. Oh, okay. Go ahead, go ahead, Sissy. We need unity to be effective in the church. And that uh, unity helps prevent confusion because a house divided against itself cannot stand. So we definitely need Unity. That's beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. That's right. That's right. And that's what we should be striving for because we represent God. Because and as the topic say, unified in Christ. Amen. And, and as I say, that's unity. That we have we are whole. We have one one faith, one Lord, and one baptism. So we shouldn't go outside of that. Praise God. If if uh, I'm gonna read a scripture and then if anyone else wants to chime in, it's fine. Praise God. And one, one hour, uh, and, and Ephesians 2 and 14, it says, For he himself is our peace and our bond of unity. For I look at the bond of unity. He, he who made both groups, Jews and Gentiles, God connecting. We're one now. We're not outsiders anymore. Into one body and broken down. My God, broken down the barrier thing that had us division, had us separated the barrier, the dividing wall of spiritual antagonism between us. Well, God is so good. Praise God. Sister, did you want to, uh, I see you on the screen. <laughs> Dolores, did you want to say something? Um, Brother Tyrone, I was just going to say there's, you know, there's power in unity. When we come together and pray about situations, there's power there. And when we come together to working in the community, there's power there. So there is, you know, it benefits us. It benefits the church to all come together. We can't all churches always agree on everything, but we can be unified on certain mm -hmm. things and we can be unified as a body of Christ. So, and I think it's important to show that front that we are together in unity with our love for mankind and um, shining our light in this dark and dying world, that we're in unity with that, with all the other believers. That's beautiful. Amen, amen. My time is going, and, but I want to share this little story. you be up against it when, when you're there teaching and thing. But anyway, I just share this little short story, and I want you to listen closely and, and just show you. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just read it. The story is told of a young boy who visited his uncle, a lumberjack at the lumber camp. So a massive tree standing alone, a massive tree standing on the top of a hill. He emphatically pointed the tree out to his uncle saying, look, look at this big tree. It will make a lot 
a good lumber, won't it? His uncle looked down at the boy and shook his head. No, son, that tree will not make a lot of good lumber. It might make a lot of lumber, but not a lot of good lumber. When a tree grows off by itself, this is what we talk about, unity, grows off by itself, too many branches grow on it. Those branches produce knots. When the tree is cut into lumber, the best lumber comes from the tree that grows together in groves. That grows what? Together in groves. The tree also grows taller and straighter. My, my, my. When, the, when they grow together. So what, what's the lesson here? Drawing from the lesson, it says that it is so with people. We become better individuals, more useful timber when we grow together rather than alone. Praise God. I heard somebody say, what they say, it takes a village to raise a child. And it, this is so beautiful. And it's just, just an illustration what can happen, praise God, when we don't stand off, we get involved and use our gifts and we come together to elevate Christ, you know, lift him up and let him be seen. And, and we do it in love, praise God. So I just wanted to share that. Amen. Anybody want to had a thought from that or wanted to respond on anything I, I just read? You know, um, when I believe, and I'm checking right now, but I believe Paul wrote, writes the same thing to the church at Colossians, um, the, the Colossians, uh, where he says, I think it's in chapter three, where we are to... Um, bearing with, um, yeah, verse 12 and 13. Well, 12 says, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as, as Christ forgave you, so you must also do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, which is which also you are called to one body and be thankful. I feel like when you talk about unity, you, you know, um, when you talk about unity, you have to, um, and it's been said, but talking about and through love, I'm grateful that you started off in John 17 because yes. we see Jesus praying and in that elaborate prayer, when he's saying, Lord, make them one as you and I are one. Um, when he's praying and, acknowledging God, all the souls you've given me, I haven't lost one there. No one can pluck them out of my hand and understanding that his desire, you know, for us to, for, as he interceded and prayed for us to be protected from the evil one, knowing that we are not each other's enemies. We don't hate each other. It's a spirit of hate, of division, it's the enemy has done this. It's, you know, and that's, you know, and we as people sometimes get so focused in the natural because that's who we see. You know, if we had the spiritual vision per se, like I think about when I watch a lot of the Marvel movies, you know, you have one that has a certain um, superhuman um, ability where they can actually see the intent or the spirit that's working behind them. We don't have that, but we can through the power of the Holy Spirit, he'll show us and deal with us and cover yes. our hearts. And so I always have to remind myself, and I used to hear my mom say this at home, I'm not your enemy, I'm your mother. You know, your father's not your enemy, he's your father. And understanding that we don't have enemies in this family, we don't have we're, the, if we are in a disagreement or if we have found ourselves in a quarrel, we need to pause for a moment and get back to unity, get back to where peace and love abide, get back to a place where we understand that we need one another. And that is something that I, for in, relate, in all the matter of our relationships, but even in the, especially in the body of Christ, understanding that we do need one another. You know, like, okay, I'm a hush, but even the parable of the Good Samaritan, how the priest and the Levite both walked by and saw that homeless man off beaten up in a ditch and did nothing, that's not unity in the faith. 
That's not unity. Even the man after Jesus gave the parable and asked who was correct, you know, who, who did well, he didn't even want to say Samaritan, the Samaritan did it. That's not unity. God has called us to be unified. And so that means I must love the very, I must love and do what's right and do what God has called me to do to the very one who has hurt me, who has ridiculed me, the one who has lied on, I, even the ones who knowingly don't even know who I am. Have I have to, because I need to be unified in the faith. I need to be unified with God. And, and my and my relationship with him dictates how I'm going to treat others. And it's so interesting because none of us are perfect in that area. We all have to work on it. But when we focus in on, God, I want to be unified in you, not under doctrine, not under principles, not under legalism, but under you. It's a different thing. Amen. Um, Brother Tyler. Yes, sir. Big. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, First Corinthians 12, uh, verses 12 through 26. It says a lot about believers. What I do see in that is, is, is God has given each believer ability to strengthen the whole church together. We have togetherness, and God gives us uh, each us ability when we come together to strengthen the whole church. Amen, amen. That's 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 beautiful. Somebody was trying to say something. Praise God. That is, that's right. That's, we got to come together. Amen. And if we're going to be affected, as Brother uh, Perry said earlier, about we represent unity. We represent life. We represent what Christ stands and for you know all about love and that love has to be exuded out from the church and when they come in and they don't see unity in the house then they back up praise god but i, I thank god for that i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna I'm I'm read one most of that scripture and then i'm gonna open the floor up for someone to prepare to read uh for his verses uh we're gonna look at what paul said his example uh, Solomon, example of unity. Solomon described unity that he saw in life, and we're all familiar with this. Uh, uh, Ecclesiastic 4, verses 9 through 12. And you're all familiar with it. I'll read it. Let it up in Ephesians. I mean, Ecclesiastic, sorry, 4. 9 through 12, and that, again, is that's the amplified version. It said, two are better than one because they have a more satisfying return for their labor. Verse 10, for if either of them fall, well, look at God, the one will lift up his companion. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to lift one another up, not to see, that's what happened. No, we don't point play. We don't do that because we could fall in that same position. Praise God. But woe to him who is alone when he falls and does not have any another to lift him up. Unity. Again, if the two lie down together and they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? And though one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three, cord of three stands, st uh, strains is not quickly broken. Amen. Unity, talking about the church with a one mind, you know, one purpose. Amen. It's all centered about going out, you know, like, like Pastor them did the last three days, uh, last two days, going out and reaching out and making and, 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 and sharing their testimony and, uh, shedding light on those folks that are in the position and the young people, you know, uh, uh, incarcerated or whatever, don't have their freedom. But we have the opportunity to go out there and share that love. And you're talking about being unified in Christ. That is beautiful. So I praise God. Amen. If anyone had a thought or wanted to say something, I always want to give a person an opportunity, if even the scriptures that we just Roll in, and you might have had a thought of something, a compliment. If not, we're going to aid someone on. Praise brother, God. Brother, 
<clears throat> brother uh, Tara. Yes, sir. Help yourself. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, back to what uh, brother Ben was saying. I was uh, sitting here reading the same thing, so we kind of on the same track here in God. chapter twelve of First Corinthians. And it reminds you as you read those verses, there's no place for pride in the body of Christ. And it starts out talking about uh, one body with many parts. And uh, I, I wanna just read a little bit of it. It starts in verse 12, it says the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free, but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit. Uh, let me jump down to 18. It says, but our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. Mm. And I think that should be underlined because it shows us that we're not all going to do the same things. We're not all going to speak the same way. We're not all going to look the same. We're not going to have the same ministries, the same uh, giftings, the same, uh, you know, skills or talents. We're all different parts. Uh, it says here, uh, how strange a body would be if it had only one part. Yes, there are many parts, mm -hmm. but only one body. The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. The head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. In fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. While the more honorable parts do not require this special care. So God has put the body together such that extra honor and care are given to those parts that have less dignity. This makes for harmony among the members so that all the members care for each other. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. Last verse, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. Very important verses uh, just lets us know how important we all are. And there's no big I and little you, mm -hmm. you know, and we, and there's no place for pride and there's no need for it. That's right. You see what it says? It says God has right. placed us. God has gifted each one. You are gifted. Everyone is gifted to some degree with something. Mm -hmm. We just have to hold on to that and, and be obedient in that calling that God called you. Amen. And I, and you know, one last thing, what sister, uh, I think it was sister Patricia was saying about uh, either sister Patricia, I know it was actually uh, uh, sister Dolores talking about power. Yes. We are, yeah. Our power wanes when we're not together, when we're not all functioning, but when we all are functioning, then you have all these giftings that start to work. And you know what, you don't have to get a, you don't have to have seminars to teach people how to flow in the gifts and all that stuff. All you need is unity. You need yes. unity and the power of Christ. Like you said earlier, you know, Christ in me is the hope of glory. If Christ is in all of us, the giftings will just flow naturally. What we think are supernatural will flow naturally. Amen. And, and, I, and I, like, I like all that what you say. If I was looking at, you know, verse 18 and you was you was emphasizing that but now as things really are god has placed and arranged oh look at this it ain't weird it ain't us man it ain't man it's god's doing has arranged the parts in the body each one of them just as he will and sought fit with the best balance of function so each gift Whatever we got, I don't care if it's a doorkeeper, I don't know if it's cleaning the church, picking up paper outside, all that, it reflects on God. You see, you know, your windows dirty, somebody get that clean and don't have to, you know, you know, that's a talent. Somebody a greeter at the door, hospitality. One somebody go over and greet somebody and say, 
uh, we're glad you came. So, so God has put all these gifts in the body. And we all, you know, we all got a gift. And like you said, we all have talent, but it's up to us to just use who we have. And as we use that, God's going to bring us up higher. And, he, and then you can say, wow, I didn't know I had that in me. And somebody else said, man, you got another talent in you, old lady or whoever. So that, that's beautiful. I praise God. I praise God for his word. It's nothing like the word. I tell you, <laughs> praise God. All right. So we're going to move on. Praise God. Let's have a reader uh, open up with uh, Paul's appeal, uh, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. And then if you have something to uh, uh, say on it, uh, we'll give someone else, maybe write something down as you're going, as God drops something in your spirit. Any volunteer? I therefore, no, therefore I, excuse me, therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves uni united excuse me, in the spirit binding yourselves together with peace for there is one body and one spirit just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future there's one lord one faith one baptism one god and father of all who is over all in all and living through all and um, minister tyrone i get excited about this passage of scripture as well you know that's good <laughs> Supposed to, <laughs> you know, um, he's he. The Apostle Paul is reaching out. He's saying, "Here we are in the body, and we've been called by God, so we ought to act like it." I often say the church needs to be the church, you know, because the world gonna be the world. Don't have to worry Amen. about that. But the church needs to be the church, and the only way we can be the church is to. Em, em, embrace the word of God and allow the, the, the one God and father of all who is over all in all to live through us all. And that's important because when we Amen. do that, then, th then there is patience, then there is love, then there is uh, looking past one another's faults because we all are faulty, you know, we all got <laughs> issues. And, I, and I, I wish I had learned the understanding of this passage years ago. Yes, yes. Would have saved some grief. Yes. Learning how to be patient with one another. Learning how to just love. I mean, it just goes so much better when we love rather than when we bite and devour one another. That's right. That's right. Brother right. Tyrone, real quick. I, yes, I thought, I went, I thought I wasn't going to say nothing, say nothing, but I couldn't keep it to myself. But I, I was thinking, <laughs> you know, sometimes when we talk about unity, we wanted to start with somebody else. You know, and and, and uh, most time it's not, you know, it doesn't start with us, but it should start with us is what I'm saying. And so when I look at verse one, and this is my point, Therefore, Paul said, therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord. This is a prison epistle. He's writing this from prison. He said, I'm begging you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called. But unity, here is someone that's on, on lockdown, you know, and, and he's exhorting the church to be unified. It starts with me. I, I, if I'm going to wait on everybody else to get unified, what am I doing? You know, yeah. that's just what I just wanted to yeah. say. Yeah. Uh, tell on. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm looking at verses two and verse three. It's there for a purpose. We are different individuals. It's important that we know this, and it's important that we treat each other in verse two and three, if we can do that, we can come mm -hmm. together and united. If we cannot do this, we'll be divided. 
and that's why Paul is so important pointing out these things. We should be gentle and polite and, and, and to each other. Not look on each other's faults, but you know, if someone has faults, then we should be praying for that person. Or better yet, we should be trying to get along with the person. Yes, yes. Spend more time yes. with that person. You know, and then because we, when one is weak, and I mean, one is hurting, the other one should feel it. So we have to come as one, even though we, we're, we're different. And that's where in, in First Corinthians, we were, uh, we were talking about verse 12. It doesn't matter how many of us, we have to become one body. And we can't do that if we go mistreat each other. And it's in there, Paul put that there for a reason, because that was going on to the church, and it goes on today. People are mistreating each other, Christians are mm -hmm. mistreating each other. And a lot of times it's not on purpose, you know, but the thing is we need to realize what God expects from us and how we're going to do that. We have to focus on what the Lord said for us to do and be led by the Holy Spirit. Because if we, and then you know what? The Holy Spirit can't make you. You have to be led by the Spirit. You have to let, you let him lead you. That's what we need to do. And you know what? And there's another thing that comes into play too. We got to remember we are different people, individuals. When you go out there in the world and on a job, whatever, those people are not the same with you either. So you learn to work with different people. And it's to your best. Yes. And uh, the Holy Ghost is, they say, you know, we got to look at, we call on the Holy Ghost for help. That's what he's there for. And each other. Amen. Praise God. I love it. I love it. Praise Brother, God. Brother Tyrone, can you hear me? Yes, sir, loud uh, and clear. Um, I, I love this because our yes. God is a God of order. First um, Corinthians 14 and 40 says, and let all things be done decently and in order. And in order for this to happen, we have to be born again, okay? Uh, right. Someone just said, in order to have unity, we have to obey the spirit of God. And I, I love God, his way of putting us in order, okay? We all have different personalities, but when we are born again, we are in harmony. You know, when you're in the choir and you're singing and you know, one is a tenor and so on and so forth, it sounds so good when everybody yeah. is singing their part. And when you realize what your gift is and you're in the church and everybody's in their lane, it's a beautiful function that God has put in the church where the gifts are working. You know, um, when you're born again, everybody has an ear and an eye for a soul when they come in the door. That's right. Uh, that's right. And it's so important for us to, to be sensitive to the uh, soul that comes in, who, who needs to be saved. You know, we, we, we testify and it has to be, you know, what God did for me so that that person who doesn't know the Lord can say, well, if he did that for me, for him, he can do that for me. That's right. We have to be unified. And the only way we can be unified is by being born again. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, I was just listening to you, and one thing you said about the choir, and we look up back at the top where we started at, and it says unity. And at the end, it says a condition of harmony. And you say that when you were talking about the choir or the group singing, they're harmonizing, they're one. And that and it sounds so beautiful when they all hit their note, when they all sing it as a group, as one. Man, it's, it's just beautiful. I praise God for that. And I was and I was looking at and I, anyone else have something to say. You, as soon as I finish sharing this with uh, you, our voice too, he said, uh, and our, our lesson always. And I like I'm a sticker for for ending. And there's an S on that. That's continually. Always be humble, not sometimes. Always be humble. 
Lord God, like I was, like you were saying, God specify how we're supposed to live this life. Humble and gentle. My humble is a uh, ge what is it? humble, gentle as a spirit, and humble as a dove. I might be misquoting it, but but gentle, be patient. See, these are attributes that we need. These are godly attributes. This is uh, patient with each other, making allowance. So we make room for a mistake or whatever. If they're not, you know, if something else, we still make allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Praise God. And, he, and right here at the bottom of here, you see, he, he spoke of one seven times and he quoted six. Seven times he spoke of being one, 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 one. That's so important. Praise God. All right, I'm gonna let someone else you want to chime in on any, anything you see there that stuck out to you or you just it just resonated with your spirit. It's it's awfully quiet tonight, so I have to talk. Uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, when I look at I don't know some for some reason I can't get past verse one. Uh, yes, yeah. It says, you know, uh, he says, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling because you've been called by God and he's calling us to unity in a time period that we live in today where there's all sorts and all levels of disharmony and disagreement and fighting and hate and killing and every you yes, know, evil yes, yes, because yes. of disunity and disjoining, there's no harmony because there's no unity in, the, right. in the land and you know, like Brother uh, uh, Ben mentioned, you know, he's calling us to be different than the world, to, attr to attract the world. We can't look like them. We have to look different. We have to be an, a, an alternative to the way the world works. You know, like Sister Dolores was saying, the world is going to be, or was it Sandy said, the world is going to be the world. But we, yes. have, we have to be a difference for the world to see, you know, and you know, this, this idea of, of, he, of what Paul says, I beg you, he's in jail. Yes. So he has had some disagreement. He has done something that has uh, upset somebody. And that's what's going on everywhere we turn. And so God is calling us to be the peacemakers, to be the ones yes. that, that spread the light and the love, to be different, you know, like you said in, in, in that, that same verse, be patient. Be patient with one another. Be patient with the world because they are the world. Yeah, you know, yeah. and, you know, bearing their, you know, one another's faults, you know, uh, because of what? The love. The love we have one for another is supposed to be, be spread abroad in our hearts. So Amen. it says make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit. Uh, binding yourselves you know and so uh yeah so we live in a time where we really need the unity and we need to right. we need to make that idea a uh, something that is like like the covid virus contagious you know where people right. you know want to be around you want to be around this idea because out there they're not going to find it and so that's why it's so good to be with the saints on sunday morning is because we get a time to get away from the out there. And this is a place of refuge. It's a place of peace. It's a place of acceptance. It's a place of love. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. And that's true. And just like you were saying, Paul said, I therefore a prisoner for serving the Lord, not because I did something wrong, unified with Christ, you see. And this is the attitude we have to take. Man, I love this. And this man said, look, no one about me. I'm do, I'm doing what God called me to do. I know when I was on the other side, I did what I wanted to do and thought I was doing right. And God had to knock me down and blind me and bring me to my senses. Boy, I love God. <laughs> Lord, he beg him. Look, look just, I'm begging you to lead a life. Word Brother, Brother Tyrone, real, 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 real quick, and I know, I know we're running late here, but you know when he's in jail, you know why he's in jail because he has sown seeds 
And, yes. you know, he was putting people in jail. Nice. So the message, so he's now reaping what he has sown. So our message, along with our message, is to give them an alternative and show them what goes around comes around and what you put out is coming back to you. So if you put out good things, good things will come back to you. You put out negative things. So, I mean, even if you don't, you know, uh, throw the Bible at them and you talk about scriptures at them, you can give them principles that are real, that are true, that you can do things a different way. We have alternative. We have a better way. Jesus said, I'm the way. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And the answer is no division in Christ. Praise God. All right. This, uh, discussion question one. Is it always easy to follow Paul's exhortation in verses one through three? All right, somebody help me out right quick. Brother uh, Tyrone, I looked at that question and, you know, right off the top, I thought, well, no, it's not, not hard at all. Because what God, Jesus commanded us was to love thy neighbor. Yes, yes. If, if you first love your neighbor and there is unity in the body, these things are not hard for you to do. You know, when you, with that example of uh, unity being like a body, you, you know, you don't get mad. You know, somebody was talking about stubbing your toe. You don't get mad at your toe because it's still, you, you walked it into something, you grab a hold of it and you try to care for it. And that's what we, what he's basically telling us to do is take care of one another and treat of each other with love. Amen. Praise man. Praise you know, God. that's, that's, that's true. That's so true, Brother David. But, you know, also, um, you know, it, unity is a beautiful thing. Uh, but I, I know I have a, a brother I've been known for 40 years. And he, I may talk to him two or three times a, a year. <clears throat> and at his church, his conversation has been like it has been for those 40 years. He don't get along with this one. It's a problem <laughs> over here. The church ain't what it used to be. I mean, you got, and it's sad because I'm, I'm talking about people that love God, mm -hmm. but it's no unity. And, and so David was right. It should be easy. You know, it, it, stem, it, it should stem from obedience to Christ and a That's love right. for God That's and a right. thankfulness for our salvation. But if, if unity was the order of the day, which it should be, we wouldn't have so much division within the body of Christ. Amen. Yes, I, I agree with you too, Brother Tay. You know, there's a reason why Paul is, is uh, putting this on to, I mean, you know, showing this up because the church even today exists. We're talking about believers. That's right. And if we do what we're supposed to do, but there's right. It not only be easy, it shouldn't be in the church, but it, it is. It, uh, we know it is in the church. We we witness it and all this and that because uh, people are, you know, even though we are Christians and, and great believers of Christ, some of them still growing. Some of them still youngsters. Yeah. yeah. Some are different than others in different ways, come from different faith and stuff. So we can't just say, Oh, I'm, I'm a believer. Everything's fine. No, 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 no. It's a growth that got to go in there. There's a relationship, not only with Christ, but with each other. Amen. Each other. That's why fellowship come in is very important. You know, I I, 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 I can't say, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a believer in Christ. Everything is fine. I can't, I can't take that because when I, I, when I came, it, it wasn't fine. It was hard for me. I seen things, and, I, and, and not only in my life, but people think, think other people's lives. So, but you know what I, God told me to do? Don't focus on him. Focus on me. I said, me, me, but God Himself. And then when you focus on the Lord, He'll take it more. You say, okay, you like this. You th you think you that, but this is what you really are, and I want you to be like this. So we gotta let the we gotta let the Lord work on us. That's right. Or we try to work on others. But at the same time, we should have a love, be love for others and gentle with others. You know, because we was there one time too. We gotta remember that. 
you, you know, know, and so, real, oh, real quick, that um, okay, go ahead. It's going back to First Corinthians thirteen for me. Um, oftentimes, we we read or that passage is heard. You know, love is patient, love is kind, and um, oftentimes it's read at weddings, right? So I can say for me, growing up, I thought it was like a wedding scripture. No, it's it's not just for, it's it's good at weddings, but it's the word of God, so it's good everywhere. You know, and so yeah. when we understand what love is, and it's breaking down God, because how many times does God tell us, even in Exodus 34, how he tells us that he's, you know, long suffering, and he's, you know, he's slow to anger, right? Um, he, but, you know, he does handle his business on the same, on the flip side of that, right? But when we look at love, and we understand love is patient, love is kind, love is long suffering, love is not proud, love is not boastful, does not keep record of wrong. All these things that we as people do regularly. We have a ledger in our heart of who has done us wrong, who has said this, who has done that. And I'm, I'm realizing for myself that when I, when I understand the importance that I need to embody the love of God in every aspect of my life. I have to love everybody. I can't pick and choose who I love. I can't pick and choose who the scripture applies to as my neighbor. I have to, it, it's, it's a work in progress. And so um, what I love about this and probably why my, my comments were a little premature earlier, but it goes back to, I think that's why Paul shared it with the Ephesians. He shared um, what love is in first Corinthians. He, he's saying it again in Philippians and, and he wants everybody to hear the message. You know, we have to be gracious with one another and understand that none of us are perfect and, and you can't keep a record of wrong because if you do that, you won't love nobody. Cause you'll remember, like, I remember I was holding stuff that my grandfather did to my mom, to my dad and to my grandmother and aunt and uncle, I wasn't even alive for, you know? And it's like, wait, throw all of that aside and learn how to love, forgive and allow for grace to abound in your heart, just as God done, has done for me. Praise Man. God. You know, Brother Tyrone, I know we got to move on. Just want to make one point here real quick, because if some, sometimes we're not careful, you know, we'll think, for instance, these verses is a rebuke. This is not a rebuke, a rebuke. This is an exhortation. Yes, yes. He wasn't addressing something that folks is doing wrong. He's exhorting us on what how we should be. This was a, a, a what they call a circular letter. And it circular circulated around Asia Minor in particular. And so when he talks about always be humble and gentle, this is an exhortation. And sometimes if we want to help people to become unified, then we need to exhort people, encourage folks in the Lord, share the love of Jesus. Because when, when that's not happening, then you're going to get the opposite effect. Sometimes people are so busy picking the flies off of everybody else. <laughs> they can't see that. The, the flies are swarming around them. But look, let's back up. So I love this where he just, he lays it out. Be patient with each other. No, he, he not, he, he's not rebuking anybody. He's exhorting the people. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. The Lord is right. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, just real quick, addressing uh, verse two. Um, you know, um, when we talk about walking worthy of our calling, we have to um, understand, first of all, you know, how much God has done for us. So what we do for him is out of gratitude. It's, it's not to earn points. It's, you know, not for any other reason. But the main thing I wanted to point out in verse three, where it talks about, um, let me see here, that uh, make every effort to keep yourself united in the spirit, binding yourself together with peace. And it's kind of like what you have to do with your marriages. I mean, you have to work at that thing. It doesn't, it's not something that always comes easy. You know, but right. if you want peace in your home, sometimes there's things you have to do where we, again, where you have to humble yourself. Sometimes you just have to let things go. You don't always have to respond to everything, whatever mm -hmm. is necessary, but it takes effort. And that's what it's saying. Make every effort 
to keep yourself. And so then when we don't do that, then we just have to go back and try to repair it later. Amen. Great. Amen. Beautiful. All right. Brother Chuck, are you on the line? I am on the line. Could you uh, uh, take uh, Ephesians 4, uh, gifted by God, 4, uh, 7 through 10, please? All right. Yeah, However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This yes. clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. And uh, I, I see the, uh, the relational nature of Christ. Uh, he's given each of us a special gift. And I think, um, I think Pastor Warren kind of spoke to this earlier and kind of along those lines, we're talking about unity. We're not talking about uniformity. Um, we're all unique. We have special gifts. We are not to compare ourselves with each other but we are to use the gifting that God has given us to edify the body. Um, and obviously, you know, we look at other passages where sometimes the, the expressive gifts, those who have expressive gifts can um, overshadow those who may have more servant-based, service-based gifts. And then the comparisons come in and all that, but that's a whole nother story. Um, so when Christ ascended to heaven, he led captivity captive. The, the bondage of sin, he broke that bondage. You know, as, um, as Christ said on the cross, it's finished to tell us die. Um, this clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. You know, my mind goes right to uh, Philippians 2, I believe. Um, Christ came to earth, he took on human flesh, and he knows what it means to be human. He knows the challenges, he knows the sorrows that we experience, yet he did that without sin. So he is able to be that, that mediator for us, because he knows exactly what it means for us to be heartbroken. He knows what it means to be rejected. He knows what it means to be talked about, to be beaten. So he understands what, what we are going through. Um, and let's see. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher of oh, heaven so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Um, I think we may have discussed this whole concept of, mm -hmm. um, you know, God being, Christ being the, uh, the creator, the sustainer of the universe. And we can, we can sometimes overlook that aspect of who he is. He is holding everything together with himself. Yes, yeah. yeah, so. yes. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. That's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, anyone, I want, anyone want to add? If not, praise God for the sake of time. That was excellent, uh, Brother Chuck. I appreciate that. Uh, let's look at the uh, discussion question two. What do these verses tell us about the sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ? Says he's in total control. Praise God. <laughs> All right. That's, that's good enough with me. Especially because we have to cut off, what, at 815, Pastor? Praise no, God. brother, we, we'll stretch it to 8.30 for you. <laughs> All right, bless you, bless you. <laughs> and I'll just write what I'll, I'll just say, I'll read what I wrote and, down. And, and 8.30 includes the benediction. <laughs> 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 Sounds great. All right, question uh, two. Go ahead, Sorry. brother, go ahead. Let the Lord use The sovereignty of the Lord Jesus Christ, the connection with the church shows that Jesus exercised his sovereignty, rule over this rule and displayed his spiritual presence through the church. So does he, so the ascended victorious 
victorious Christ has given spiritual gifts to his church to extend his sovereignty uh, rule over all. And this pretty much what Chuck can say. Anyone want to add or uh, want to say anything else on that? Real quick, you know, that question is pretty awesome because the idea of sovereignty means that he is who is he who is in control of the universe and everything in it gave gifts as big as God is, as he is all powerful, he is all knowing, he has he is in all places at once, he is beyond our understanding, but he is a giver. Mm -hmm. And it says he gave each of us a special gift. I mean, how does it feel on Christmas morning when you were a little kid? You know, and you knew, you know, most of us at least knew that when we got up in the morning, we going to go look under the tree. We couldn't even sleep that day yes. because yes. we were going to get a gift. And we, most of the time we got bigger, we know most of the time we already know what it is because we, we have to go buy it. But you still had that expectation. You knew that something special, that's why it says a special gift. <laughs> And then it talks about generosity. This mm. God who is so huge, he is so awesome. He, as awesome as he is in greatness and power, he is awesome in love. That's right. He is That's awesome right. in uh, all that he is. And it says he led the captives, led the crowd of captives. So he set people free. He gave mm. gifts. And, it, and, you know, this is this is phenomenal when you think about who he is and who we are, that, that scripture says, who am I, who is man that you are mindful of him? He's not right. only thinking about us, he's giving us stuff. And he's not giving us stuff because we're good, because we're pretty, because we have a lot of money or we have friends or we have intelligence. He's giving it to us just because he is a giver, just That's because right. he is good. And, and so, you know, that, 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 that old saying, you know, you're a chip off the old block, you know, and we are supposed to be like our father. Yes, we're supposed yes. to be givers. We're supposed to be lovers. We're supposed to be peace givers. We're supposed to be humble. We're supposed to uh, love one another and help one another. When somebody falls, we help pick them up, not walk over them. You know, we, 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 this is this should be our natural inclination. This should be our nature. When we got that new nature, Brother Ella Boy was talking about being born again. When we got that new nature, those new attributes come along with that new nature. And uh, yeah, yeah, so over process of time, those new, those, all those attributes start to come out and they start to show and it starts, the, the fruit starts to be born and it's a wonderful thing, amen. Amen, beautiful, beautiful. And I, I think, I don't know if uh, 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 Terry or who it was is talking about as you grow in God and when you go to the job or in the grocery store, it's just automatic, you know, to show love and, and, and back up and let somebody else go for you. Don't, you don't worry about nothing because you're, you're, united, you're united in Christ. And you all about being hospitable, you know, want to keep harmony and whatever it takes, you'll take the, the ladder, you know, you'll back up and then give them, uh, go, go ahead, that's fine, you go ahead, I, I can wait. And that's where patience and all these gifts start uh, uh, manifesting themselves in our life. So I praise God, that's beautiful. So praise God, anyone that haven't said anything, would you like to take the last half on uh, the purpose of giving? Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Just read it. If you don't have anything uh, to add to it, uh, someone else will uh, chime in. Just a volunteer reader. I'll read and somebody else can, can comment the purpose of gifts. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, 
measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Amen. 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 All right. Who be the first? Anything you, you see in there and you would like to uh, uh, respond to it? There's room for everybody. No one has to be all, all five. No one has to be everything and all things. Mm -hmm. What God has made for you to be, um, be just that. There's a passage in scripture. I don't know. Um, I know it's, um, but it deals with um, if you're called to evangelize, do so, do it well. You know, Romans, Romans, I think it's Romans 12. Is it Romans 12? Um, that was read not too long ago, but, you know, helping us to understand if you are to preach, preach the word, do and not of yourself. If you are to encourage, encourage someone, you don't have to be anybody else. You don't have, ain't nothing worse than you trying to imitate someone else. And because it just won't fit. You have to be yourself. And that's something that I am constantly reminding myself and I thank God that he never stops talking to us and he helps us to know I have created you fearfully and wonderfully so for a purpose and a plan to bring glory to my name and I need you to be you because what I want to do through you is what I want to do through you if if I wanted you to look like them I would do what I would deal with them in that way, you know what I mean? And so it really helps us to understand the invent in being an individual. So we have our own identity in God, as well as respect who God puts in place, because that's that's a God thing, that's not a us thing. Um, as well as understanding that we are to yet continue in love, growing more and more like Christ, and knowing that He's the head of the church. We thank God for our pastors. We thank God for the ones he has assigned to be um, caretakers for us while we're here. But he is the leader. He is, we, we're built in, in operating in and through him. So there's no one, we don't bow down to pastors. We don't kneel before pastors. No, no. We kneel before the Lord, our maker. Amen. Praise God. Beautiful. Anyone else? Anyone else? As I, as I was looking at this, praise God, and we see the purpose of gifts. This is important. Uh, Mention some of the spiritual leaders Christ gives as a gift to the church. See, these, these leaders here, God is give them as gifts to the church. And we see it first notice the leaders are given by God. Uh, though God encourage learning and training. God's calling is the first priority for, and for those leaders. Second variety of leaders, apostles, primary uh, trans, uh, tra uh, travel to share the gospel and start new congregation. Pastors and teachers uh, focus on leading, leading a particular congregation is to link to the shepherd, teachers, and a single office. And it goes on, and the third, we see the Paul writes to the church in the Ephesians regularly, and the type of leaders they were uh, encountering, evangelists, are literally those who share the good news. And we see in Philip, Acts 21 and eight, and also in Timothy, commanded to work out, work and an evangelist, 2 Timothy 4 and 5, that may have not, uh, not been his primary spiritual gift. And then pastors, 
are mentioned elsewhere as elders for as first timothy 3 and titus 1. teachers are those with the ability to effectively communicate god's word to others all pastors must have the ability to teach first timothy 3 and 2 but some people may be gifted as teachers while not called to be pastors Romans 12 and 7. so i just i just wanted to share that praise god and breaking that that little section down so if anyone want uh one of the pastors or uh, elders or somebody might want to chime in or anyone that got a thought from that if not we're going to move on we got five minutes but i still give you space if you have something you want to say all right I see and I see one one quick 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 note. I see in those verses two mm -hmm. main things. One is what we've been talking about the whole time, which is unity. The other thing is maturity. Yes, 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 yes. You know, we have to find ourselves growing. He talked about growing in <laughs> verse 15. Instead, we will speak the truth and love growing in every way we shouldn't be in the same spiritual plane that we are now All right. we were five years ago we should be growing in not only the knowledge of the word of god but we should be growing in our relationship with the lord amen thanks god all right hey that's beautiful that's right amen. and that's that's one thing that is very essential you know and we we should be endeavoring to, to grow in God, maturity, getting stronger, praise God. And then the gifts will manifest themselves even more so because you say, wow, I didn't know you had that in you. God didn't want to use you in that area. Or you have a, uh, a gift of ministering, uh, encouragement, a gift of faith. And there's so many uh, <clears throat> gifts, but they specify these uh, here in five gifts. Okay, so lastly, we're going to do a discussion question. What is the purpose of the fivefold gifts given to the church? And how can a person determine and know what their gift is? Well, I'm going to go on and uh, answer the voice app and I sent them one because we got about a few more minutes. The purpose of the fivefold gifts, and that's in Fijian. If you look at our verses in Ephesians 12, 13, it tells us that the purpose of the fivefold ministry is to prepare, to prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity. And my Brother Ben said that, and, and uh, Minister Warren spoke on that too, in the faith and in the knowledge of the son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ, praise God. Anyone wanna take the stab at the second or, or even what I just said, uh, the, uh, the discussion question is so. If not, yes. go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna, I was gonna say, the way a person can determine what their gift is, is for them mm -hmm. to find themselves working, doing, and they that determine they'll 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 the light will go on. You know, they'll find yes, themselves yes. Um, uh, say if it's if it's uh, um, um, helping uh, someone who's uh, mm -hmm. um, struggling. Uh, there, you know, there's there's families that that need assistance, and and you know, this person might find themselves constantly going by and praying with, or you, your gift just God just reveals because He wants the gifts operating in the church. He wants the church to grow. He wants us to be able to go out Amen. into highways and hedges and to compel people to come in. And the way to do that is for us to, you know, get busy. Uh, we That's right. a friend who used to say, "Let's get busy for God." She made a song out of it. Let's get busy for God, and as you do, then you you, you your gift is determined what your gift is. Amen. And just like you say, we occupy till He come, and say, and as we go, say, whatever you find your hands to do, just do it. 
you know, get busy. And eventually, I can say it for his lady, it, it's going to say, wow, man, and God's starting this what God admire. God wants us to step out in faith. And then, then God give you more. Then he add to you, you know, your talent. And then, like you said, you you will see it. You will see it. And you didn't know you had it in you. Praise God. So we thank God for that. And I thank God for all the comments, applying the text. Since the Lord has blessed us with spiritual gifts, since the Lord has blessed us with spiritual gifts, let us use them for his glory so that someone will come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord, as their uh, life, as the Lord of their lives. Memory voice, therefore, I, a prisoner for the ser serving the Lord, beg, praise God, to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Ephesians 4 and 1, that's in the NLT. So that, I thank God for that. I thank God for the lesson on the night. Amen. Talking about unified in Christ. I know how to in Christ, praise God. So at this time, praise God. I know the pastor uh, spoke about the benediction, so I'll I turn it over to the pastor. Uh, unless he just, you know, praise God, I turn it over to the pastor and that, that, uh, that you uh, want to go. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise for the lesson tonight. Thank you, Brother Tyrone. Praise, praise God. Praise God. Praise Beautiful God. lesson. Thank God. It's so much, so much in this passage. We probably could spend another two weeks in, in, in chapter four. Uh, uh, in just these 16 verses, but no, such a blessing, unity. And I, I gotta tell you, I thank God for the unity in three-piece Christian ministry. I thank God for being Amen. in the midst of such uh, blessed people of God, you know, as we strive together to do the will of God. Is there more work to do? Yes. Is there more more things that we can be unified in as it relates to the church yes and and god has taken in those taking us in those directions and so i'm just excited tonight uh for unity i thank god for uh you know yoking up with people all over this past couple of days and we'll be on tomorrow and the next day who's not in in uh in in our fellowship right but we're in the body of christ that's right that's right and and, and so when that unified front is you know, is, is there, then where there's unity, there's strength, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And so we praise God on today, on tonight, for this lesson. We thank God for each one that's here on the line on tonight. And we're just giving God glory. He's worthy. He's worthy of the praise. And I think if, if anyone want to walk in unity, it start, or, or even knowing what our gifts are, it starts with obedience. Yeah, so, and, 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 and obedience uh, uh, comes on the back of loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Because when you understand who he is, we, then we, we, we're ready. God, here I am. Like Isaiah said, God, send me. And so we thank the Lord tonight. Praise God. Is there any uh, special prayer request tonight as we prepare to close out? Yeah, Pastor. Um, uh, one of the ladies I worked with while I was working, uh, I think I mentioned to the church that she uh, lost her daughter mm. about two, maybe maybe a month and a half ago. Anyway, uh, she is struggling big time. And she texted me today and said that she told me that the uh, they did an autopsy on her daughter. It's un they couldn't figure out what it was. Anyway, it's she's just she's just very very uh, upset. And her name is Claudette. Just mm -hmm. keep uh, Claudette in, in prayer. Wow, definitely. We can definitely be praying for Claudette. Uh, you know, you remember, uh, uh, I think most the, most of us who, who work with the food pantry church, remember a friend of ours that started coming to food pantry, a tall brother, uh, James Lumpkin? Yes. <laughs> and, and Brother David, I know you remember Brother James. I got it. I had been, he's been on my mind. I got a text from him today. And uh, he said he had a major surgery on July the 5th. And he sent me a picture of uh, him in a wheelchair and he's gonna be in a rehab at Fontana Kaiser uh, for the next two weeks. Don't know what his problem was or what transpired. Uh, so we wanna keep brother James Lumpkin in prayer as well. 
Mr. Jackson, how's, how's Brother Sam doing? He's doing great. Amen. 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 Yeah. So, so how's Jackie doing? I'm tired. Okay. <laughs> but we're doing Praise good. We're doing Jackie. good. Praise God. And and uh, again, uh, you know, not and not. Uh, I'm just saying. Uh, you know, for me, uh, you know, I've been throttling down a little bit because, uh, you know, this little EKG issues I've been having and uh, uh, angiogram coming up on the 25th. So I've been really trying to throttle down uh, a little bit on activity. But yet and still, uh, the Lord has blessed on this week. And I uh, just ask you all to continue to pray for, for me and uh, the team as we go into Donovan Prison on uh, this Saturday. Uh, so I covered your prayers. So uh, again, uh, Pastor, why don't you just, so you've heard these uh, prayer requests, why don't you close us out in, in prayer, sir? Elder Jones, did you hear me? I, I didn't catch it, but yeah, I got you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, this, this evening we're just uh, here again to say thank you, Lord, for who you are. You're the sovereign Lord. You're God of all things. Lord, you're in control of all these things that we encounter, or you're in control of our day. We thank you, Lord, for showing yourself strong, bringing us through another day. You said it's a day where so would our strength be, and we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for those that have been on the line tonight, all those homes that have been represented as well, God, we thank you. We thank you for the prayers, Lord, that have gone forth and those that have solicited prayer. Uh, Lord, I pray tonight for Claudette, uh, her other daughter and, and husband, and Lord, even as they continue to grieve over the loss of her daughter and the young lady's sister, God, we ask continue to comfort and strengthen them, continue to guide their minds, Lord, so that they decide that maybe I better call on God now. And so, Lord, this is our prayer that they, even in these circumstances and under these conditions, that they inevitably call upon the name of the Lord. You said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so, Father, we ask, Lord, that you comfort. We ask, Lord, that you intervene into their minds and hearts that they might call upon you. And, Lord, for James Lumpkin, God, we, we know that you know he's been on my prayer list. And so, Father, we thank you. He's called upon us once again. And, Father, he may not have the relationship we hope, but, Lord, he has called on us for a reason. He knows you're there. He knows you're real. And so, Father, we just ask, Lord, that you draw him a little bit closer through this as he rehabilitates after having surgery father just be with him touch his mind draw him closer to you with cords of love and we thank you lord for the content conditional use permit that we obtained on yesterday thank you for being there thank you for all those involved those that are in, that have always been there for you set them in the place you set them in the way so that they would be there at a, such a time as this in our ministry at the three P's. And Father, we thank you for the ministers that were there. We thank you, Lord, for Brother Doug, who was there. We thank you, Lord, for how you orchestrated the whole thing. And Father, finally, we will ask your continued support and blessing on our pastor as he gets ready to not only go to San Diego with the group, but Father, go before them and prepare the way, be a be there when they get there, have, have an already touched hearts, God, so that when they get there, hearts are already prepared, hearts are already open, Lord, to hear the good news of Jesus Christ, the truth of the gospel. We thank you, Father, for what's going to happen. We thank you for those that will give their lives to you after this encounter. And so, Father, we look toward his uh, pastors, uh, Andrew Graham, and we thank you, Father, you are already there waiting with the doctors. You already have it set up, Father. You're going to be there when the procedure is done, or when it starts and when it's done. You'll be there right there directing the scalpel, directing that doctor with all his skills. But Father, we thank you. You're the great physician. You're the one that's going to uh, make sure that this thing works out. And so, Father, we just thank you for our three Ps and those that, are, that have needs tonight. You know each one. You know who needs healing. You know who needs financial problems financial support you know who needs uh, uh, uh support of different kinds we know you know lord what we need and we thank you lord we put all our needs into your hands father we we just thank you for who you are for what you're able to do you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think 
And so, Father, we just continue to, to, to trust in you tonight. Bless each home and each heart tonight. We thank you, Father. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God bless you. Amen. 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 Brother Mark, God bless you, sir. God bless you, Pastor. We're praying.